we're going to go over delete others and delete all. As we're going to select here, it's called delete all, it deletes all other subtools besides the one it's selected. As you can see, the boots here are selected. So we're going to come down here and delete others, and it's going to delete all the other subtools and keep the one that is selected. We're going to go ahead and load this back up. You can see the demo soldier is the one that is the whole body here. This one is selected. And we're going to delete all. It's going to delete all subtools. And the one, even the one that is selected. And it's going to leave a Polymath 3D star. The reason why it leaves a Polymath 3D star, in case you have another 3D object up here that you want to select, it would automatically leave you in edit mode. We're going to go over to split to similar parts and split to parts. Uh, this is unlike split uh, group split. Um, this does not work on groups, it works on parts. Uh, you can see I got the demo soldier all merged into one. Uh, we're going to press split to similar parts. Uh, what looks like similar parts? Well, the boots do down here. Uh, the shin guards, uh, the wristband. So they're going to go ahead and they're going to split to similar parts. So when I press this, we'll press here, and it's going to keep them as groups. So here's the boots, and it kept them as together in the group, and then the shin guards, and the wristband. Let's go ahead and merge all these together again. Merge visible. And to pick that up, I'll just move the slider all the way to the right. So it was the last two that was created. And this one we got is called split to parts. Um, now these uh, shin guards and these boots will be splitted and they won't be in pairs anymore. Because they're going to be split to parts, not similar parts. So if we click down here, you can see over here that these are not in pairs anymore. I'm clicking these, and here's the boots. And just one little note, I don't know if this is a bug or not, but just in case you run this problem, um, I'm going to go ahead and hide part of this, and notice the uh, sometimes the split, split hidden will not work. And in some cases, well, I'll just show you, is because... Uh, when I merge this, I went ahead and killed the uh, geometry here. Let me just show you really quick. Load this back up. Now it's got subdivision levels. Um, then I'm going to go ahead and bring this here so you can see this split hidden. It's grayed out. Now if I hide part of this, Control Shift, click. Well, it's still grayed out. It's not working. Well, we need to have this at the slowest subdivision levels for this split hidden to work. As you can see now, it's still it's um, highlighted here, and it will split anything that's hidden. Then there's our new tool up there, and here's the original one that I split it from. That's just a little tip. This is T corner and T border. I got some little examples here so you can kind of see and compare here. We'll turn on solo so only the active tool that is selected shows. I mask this and I press extract with certain settings and with some of the T corner on the T border so you'll be able to see this. So if we go to the T corner with a T corner on right here, let me go ahead and frame this up a little bit closer. Well, the T corner it's going to allow triangles around the corner. Now if we go to the T border, well what this does it puts a nice little uh, thin edge around the previous edge. So if we hover our cursor over here you can see it says it press have the thin border of geometry applied around the edge. Well what this means is it's got little protective dots. They're usually under the crease option here. Um, I'm going to leave everything off and I'm going to divide this and divide this. You can see it kind of shrink here. It's got these blow protected dots. Control Z, Control Z. 
Now if I uncrease all and divide it, then you can see it kind of really shrinking up. And if you want to take a look at these other ones, here's where the, the T corner and T border on. That's what you get there. And these were both of these off. Let me go ahead and change the material here so we can see a little bit better. Now, as I was saying about these, there's a little dotted lines go all the way up and down these edges from what, um, they're really close from the original edge. And, um, uh, this what helps keeps it from shrinking. Uh, these little dotted edges that help protect it are only for ZBrush only. So if you export this for as an OBJ, uh, these don't get exported. So um, basically, when you export this, um, you're not going to have any kind of crease options. So basically, if you increase this, uh, this is how it's going to look in the program. So if you divide it, it's going to divide like this. This is edge loop. We're going to turn on poly frames and we need part of this mesh hidden for this to work. And I'm going to hold the control key, shift key and click. And we're going to hide this area right here. And now our displacement slider has came in enabled. We're going to crank this up. And we're going to press edge loop. And when this is cranked up to the right or to the positive over here, it's going to extrude it outwards. To the negative minus zero it's going to extrude it inwards another thing it did is it created a another edge loop around the uh, border so let's bring everything back and you can see it right there what's good about this is this has a uh, extrusion it gives the it gives it an illusion of fake thickness now this is unlike the subtool extract um, when you use this, this gives this, uh, this like fake vest here, uh, double sided. It'll have the vest on the front and the back and the geometry will be quite large because it'll be double. With the extrusion, you can kind of give it that fake, uh, thickness without doubling up the geometry. Let's control Z this back. And, uh, let's go ahead and just let's tone this down a little bit here and we can turn on the crisp here and we extrude it and if that's not enough you can keep on clicking this button and to the many times you want and we can bring that and you can kind of see there a little hard to see so let me just kick this back a little bit and we need to kick this up a little bit here and then we got a nice hard edge. Control Z this back. Now if we do it to the negative, it's going to extrude it inwards. I'll click it a couple times. Then it extrudes it inwards. Like I said, you can keep on clicking this button more than once. See if I select it now, it's going to tell me the function requires the mesh to be partially hidden and this is why this won't work. Throw this back, and I'll do it one more time, and we'll do it to the positive here. It's loop. It's a little bit more. It's loop, and one more. I'll do a couple more. So you can see a little bit better in the video. I'll go ahead and just fill this with a different uh, material. see right there this is edge loop mass border this works something similar like the uh, slice curve brush here with poly frames on control key and shift key held down and it creates a where it cuts it all the way through and makes its own poly group so if I can control key shift key and click we can hide and show each one Let's control Z this back and we're going to use some masking. Let me go ahead and get a different mask here. I'll bring 
down here. And then we're going to select the edge loop mass border. And then we can hide and show it. Now if you look real close, it's a little bit choppy around the circle here. Let's turn on display property. Double. So how can we fix that? Let's control Z that back. And what we're going to do is we're going to hold the control key like we're blurring the mask and click. Now it's kind of blurred there. So we're going to come back up here and we're going to edge loop mass border. This will make it a lot better, a lot more smooth around the edges. Let's turn off polyframe so we can see a little bit better and you can see how smooth it is around the edges. Let's go ahead and compare that one without the uh, smooth on here. So what we'll have to do is we'll have to delete the hidden and we'll do it again. Right here. Now this one has no smoothing. Edge loop mask here. And now you can really see the difference. The one on the left had a little bit of smoothing. The one on the right does have no smoothing. I'm going to show you another way you can use this. We'll turn on the polyframe. Um, instead of coming over and clicking this button, if you hover your cursor over there, you can see the hotkey is Control plus Shift plus E. So I'm going to go ahead and draw a little mask here. I'm going to click to blur it. Then I'm going to press the control key, shift key, and the E key. And what I'm going to do is uh, called Mesh Fusion. I'm using this brush over here called H, the insert H cylinder. This is a little short flat one. Okay, don't get it confused with this uh, insert cylinder one. This is the flatter one. So I'm going to drag out. I'll tip it to the side a little bit so you can see this. And I'm going to like I'm going to clear the mask. Hold the control key, click and drag, and I'm going to do it again. All right, this is what we call mesh fusion. All right, this is unlike the DynaMesh. All right, and another thing we can do with this, if we go ahead and do this again, I'll blur it. Control E, and this time I'm going to hold the Alt key down. This is going to insert it inside the mesh. I'm going to clear the mask once and do it again. This is what we call mesh fusion and it kind of resembles the DynaMesh but this is uh, not the DynaMesh and it doesn't destroy the rest of the mesh. This is the key remesher. Um, this is really good. If you have any meshes that are has bad geometry, this will fix it. This is retopolizes over the mesh. Um, this will even if this mesh was triangulated, this will turn it into clots. Uh, another thing that you could use this for is let's say this character here, I had no subdivision levels and I was stuck with one subdivision level at the highest, and I wanted to get you know have my slider where I can move it back and forth. Well, this is another way that you can get higher and lower subdivision levels. I'll show you that here in just a little bit. So, if we go to the key remesher here and we press the key remesh, let's turn on the polyframes, uh, and leaving the auto mask off, what will happen is when I key remesh this, it's going to make the polygons evenly distributed and evenly squared all the way around the whole mesh. If I turn on auto mask, well, this works by peak and valley. Um, I'm going to show you where the peak and valley at, and that's down here under the um, masking and peak and valley. Well, you really can't see the peak and valley when the auto mask is on because it's really not visible. Uh, you do not need to come down here and press mask peak and valley. I'm just showing you this area where it's kind of telling you where the peaks and valleys are at. And that's in these high detail areas. So what's going to happen is it's going to try pushing the polygons smaller in this area where it's mass and that non mask area that's going to try helping them keep them evenly squared and evenly distributed apart. Okay.
okay uh, it's highly re recommended to leave the auto mask on then if you can remesh it and things are still not working right well it could be a couple things and what you would have to do to fix that is you would have to manually come in here with a control key and you mask this area that might have this problem you can still you still leave the auto mask on that's fine and this is where the uh, mass density slider comes into effect here so if I turn it way down in this area right here where it's masked at it's not going to put compact the uh, polygons small in this area um, then if I crank it all the way up it's really going to compact this and try to help maintain that um, shape right there so I'll clear that so let's go ahead and let's just drop this down here just a little bit and as you can see we got just one slider here for the target polygon count it's grayed out it's because one of these buttons down here are active if I set it to half it's going to do half the points here when it's done Q remesh if I press the same it's going to do the same if I uncheck the same it gives me an option it still shows me about the same pretty close to what I just selected and if I manually wanted to come in here and do it like this I can I think the lowest you can get is a thousand and the most is fifty thousand so we're gonna go on to the next step let me just go ahead and crank that out of the way up right now then we got the curve stiffness slider that works with a Q remesh brush over here if we go here here's the Q remesh brush and if I try uh, drawing out an area where I want my edge to start flowing and follow that flow let's say around the eyes here a little bit okay this is where the curve stiffness slider comes in effect if it's at number one at the lowest it's going to try following it just a little bit if you crank it up kind of high it's more it's going to try following where you drew that new curve so what I'm going to do is I'm going to freeze this one because it has um, higher and lower subdivision levels and I want to try keep maintaining the shape I already have for the high detail so I'm going to freeze that and when I do this it brings me down to the lowest polygon count my next step is make sure the auto mask is on then I gotta determine what is going to be best for my uh, polygon count well if I go too low what's going to happen is more likely anywhere like an ear area or any high detail area we're gonna lose a lot of that and I don't want that and if I go too high well what's gonna happen is when I get done I'm gonna be stuck with a high dense mesh which I don't I like to start between medium medium low well this one at double here which would be double this one here be pretty close you know somewhere around 7,000 or maybe a little bit more so we're not gonna use the curve stiffness slider right now and then I'm gonna press key remesh before I do this if the mesh is symmetrical make sure your cemetery is on so use the X key see here's I got one cursor if I press the X key key and I got two cursors then we're gonna come over here and press key remesh and every time that I press this key remesh I will more likely pause the video to speed things up okay now that it's finished I need to kind of look around I'm pretty much eyeballing the problems I think were where it might hit it's usually going to be the ear area or the fingers the nostrils um, it doesn't look bad and uh, if it does I would control Z that then I would have to come in here manly mask this and use my slider here but it looks all right so I'm not even going to use the density slider and redo this my next step is to unfreeze this Let's bring it back here and we're going to unfreeze this and we're going to get our subdivision levels back and we're going to get the highest and lowest one well here to cause another little problem down here in the neck area as you can see on the side here we got this hole so we're going to control Z this and if you run into this problem we'll come up to sub tool and we got this distance slider what I want to do is I want to crank it up a little bit so it can grab a little bit of the di distance because it's not you know projecting it all the way back if I go too high what will happen is more likely I'll fix this area and but it could cause a a problem in another area where I might have the nostrils and all of a sudden I'll get some strands that will go way off so just go a little bit and don't go full blast on the distance slider right now and it's just trial and error and just check it again and see if that fixed it and 
once it looks good, look around it, clear the mass. Now we have our higher and lower subdivision levels. And you can see the polygons here are pretty much evenly distributed and evenly squared. And we have our higher and lower subdivisions. I had paused the video and reloaded the demo head here and I'm going to go on to the next little step. We're going to freeze this one here and turn on the auto mask because it's highly recommended. Now I'm going to turn off the X cemetery here and I'm going to pull, well, I control Z that. Let's go ahead and go to the move mode here and pull one side out like this. Now if you want it like this, well, you need to leave the cemetery off. Another thing, if it's non-symmetrical and you turn on the X cemetery, when you Q remesh this, this will make it symmetrical. So it's basically anything that's on the left side of the screen will be over on the right side. So uh, this ear was pulled up here on the left side. Well, when I get done Q remeshing it, it's going to be on both sides. So let's just take a quick look at that. Let me just crank this up a little bit higher. Real quick. Now you can see the pole here on the left is now one over on the right. If you don't like this, then Control Z this. Um, if you don't like that, is because you need to turn the cemetery off. That way, if you have it off, this left ear will always be the biggest, and this one over here will be the smallest. But for some reason, I had the cemetery on, and uh, I kind of want them both to have the small ears well here's another little tip you go down to the deformation here and you can mirror this all right now like i said anything that's on the left side of the screen now will project over on the right side so now we're going to have two small ears and that's what it looks like when it's done See that? And you see that. All right. In this next demonstration here, we're just gonna make this a polymesh 3D. I loaded the demo head up again, and when I did that, I killed the subdivision levels. Uh, another way that you can do this to preserve the highest detail is give it one more subdivision level, then freeze this and repeat the process. Turn to X cemetery, make sure auto mass is on. Then we'll unfreeze this. And then we clear the mass. And you can see we got our slider back. Let's go ahead and load this one back up again. Now, every time that I make this a polymesh 3D when it kills this uh, subdivision level, I'm kind of mimicking, let's say this was imported from another package and really never had no subdivision levels. And I'm always trying to get that high detail back. Well, another way that we can do this is just by duplicating this. That way we get two copies here. And uh, let's close some of this up here. Turn auto mask on. And make sure our X symmetry is on and key remeshes. Now I'll just turn on solo so we can see our active mesh here. That's a new key remesh one. Here's the original one here. Uh, we got about 57,000, and this one here at 19. What we'll do is we'll go ahead and divide this. And once we get done there, we're selected on the new Q remesh one and then we're gonna project off. We may need to use the distance slider. Won't know until we try it. So let's go ahead and project off and see if we can grab that back. So it looked like to grab the detail back pretty good. And like I said, with the solo one, we're only seeing the new Q remesh one here. So everything projected good, and now we have our lower and higher subdivision levels. So 
let's go ahead and delete this one here and uh, we'll go ahead and freeze this one here uh, we're gonna go back over to the key remesher guides here um, we're gonna have on the cemetery uh, we don't need to have it on at all times we can actually if I did one side right now and I said oops I forgot the other side no big difference all you do is just turn the X cemetery on I don't know if you can kind of see it but uh, the guide is over on the other side already so turn this hole back up and if I want to remove it I just click here yeah it works on the draw size too so if the draw size is down and you're and you have a, a real dense mesh um, it'll stick to it a lot better you can see that getting them little small little dots there and if I increase the size here I get really big and more spaced apart so that's kind of preference uh, another thing I like doing with that is going into the stroke and the lazy mouse turn the lazy mouse on and the radius a little bit and I can kind of do a little bit smoother stroke there and if you want to draw another stroke here you can draw another stroke here let's say I want to remove that stroke I can press the alt key and drag across there and sometimes when you're dragging around here and you hold the alt key you can drag part of it away like that instead of the whole thing if you want to add to it you just go up there and get that little bird band right there and just bring it up like that let's click to clear that and turn off the cemetery and if I drag out then I hold the shift key and you can see it's going all the way around it I'm going to turn my draw size down a little bit now when you draw out these guides it's recommended not to do a whole bunch of them if you get too much it's less freedom that the Q remesher will have a chance to work and it might make things a little bit unpredictable uh, this Q remesher here it's really simple you don't have to um, get really far-fetched on where you want the edge flow just do a few of them you don't have to go crazy on it and just you know kind of go in certain areas and I'll bring it down here and we'll bring it about right here turn the X cemetery on and especially around the ears it's going to need it and uh, I'm not really going to go into detail um, of doing the ears and everything but uh and I you know I need to find out how much I want it to follow this this curvature it's going to have around here so uh, that's going to be a factor there so let's go ahead and see my polygon counts I'm getting here maybe I can go half alright um, I'm gonna leave it at one see what's gonna happen so we'll just press that and it's just about down here so just a second uh, it worked pretty good uh, it's gonna be kinda hard to see because the guides are gone and if you didn't like that and you wanted to follow up more just control Z this back the guides come back and then if you wanted to follow it more then just crank up the curve stiffness here a little bit now the more that you crank this up uh, the less freedom the Q remesher will have and might not work so well I mean it's something you gotta try uh, they probably improve it but uh, it's working really good now we're gonna do partial hidden um, Q remesh a um, little instance here I'm gonna do this front legs and we're gonna keep an eye on right down here at the topology you can see it's kind of bunched up here and this is where I'm going to do partial hidden and we're going to notice something in the back of the dog that's got this uh, bunched up little polygons here we're going to use this as kind of a reference so what I'm going to do is hold the control key shift key and drag up and get part of this and partial hidden here and we want to make sure that our cemetery is on and uh, we can use this option here same double or half we're going to use half this time and key remeshes and what's going to happen is as you can see here let me get this back here a little bit these little bunched up areas here this is going to get all swapped out this is going to be their new key remesh 
and the rest of the dog is going to be preserved. As you can see, now we got them bunched up. This is the new mesh, and it kind of bridged it together. And let's zoom this back. And you can see here's still the original dog as I was using this uh, back leg here as a reference where it's bunched up for the polygons, this little circle here. And well, we got our new front legs here. Okay, I'm going to be going over a micro mesh. We're going to the geometry here. And we're going to go down to modify topology. And we have the micro mesh button here. Um, as you can see here, this uh, top plane here, the polygons are square and the one below are kind of stretched out. So we want to replace each one of these polygons with an object, so we'll select a micro mesh. Alright, now when I select one of these tools here, it'll convert it to a poly mesh 3D. So I'm going to select here. Then we're going to get to this uh, pop up. Uh, we need to turn on the, uh, it says here, sub mesh is only visible in best render mode the BPR turn on draw sub mesh and the render palette so press OK and what it's asking us is come up here to render and render properly and we need to turn on the draw micro mesh uh, as you can see I have the polyframes on if we turn this off it's kind of hard to see so we'll turn these back on and this works on BPR render so I'm going to render this out and you can see how that's working like that all right, we're going to go ahead and turn off the polyframe. I'm going to tip it just a little bit. We're going to do it one more time. And when it's finished, uh, we can convert this to a uh, real geometry. So we'll convert, convert VPR to Geo. And if you notice, the top ones here, because it had these square polygons, they're not stretched out. The bottom ones are stretched out. Let's control Z this back a little bit turn this on. Uh, you notice the way this, this uh, the mesh that I selected, this one right here, the hex, it's pointing directly at me. If I want to change this, we'll just make this poly mesh 3D for right now. Then we're going to come down here to the uh, preview here. I'm going to click and drag this up and hold the shift key. Then I'm press store. Now, if this was an imported object, you might need to come down to deformation and unify this. So, take note of that. We're going to select our mesh again. And we're going to go to geometry. And we're going to redo the micro mesh. We need to shut it off and turn it back on. And we're going to select our new one here, the PM. And then we're going to go ahead and render this out. And I'll go ahead and convert this to a geo here. Turn off the polyframe. As you can see, the ones at the bottom are stretched out, and the ones on the top are all even because of the polygons were all square. Control Z this back. Now, there might be a certain point in time that you may want to flip one of these. Well, Control Key, Shift Key, click and drag. And we got this one here called Spin Edge. So we can spin it that way. Spin it that way and spin it that way. Bring everything back. We got these two different from the rest and BPR render it. And when we get done, um, we can convert this to geo. Now keep note now this helix that I am applying to this mesh, it applies one per polygon. And if this uh, helix here has a lot of polygons, um, you got to multiply that by how many polygons and how many um, polygons you have here. So if this had 10 here on this top plane here and this one had 100 polygons, well, that would be somewhere I think 1,000. So you got to take that in consideration because if you get too much, it will bog down the system. When we get done, we'll convert to geo. I have this uh, leaf, it comes with a uh, ZBrush, and I got it strapped to a single plane. And this leaf has poly painting, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and clone this one right here. And 
If we look at this leaf on this plane, you can see the right side and left side is over exceeding the polygon. If we come down to the preview down here, you can think of this area as the plane itself. You can see it's clipping off on the right side and the left side. So if I was to go ahead and we're going to delete the, the leaf here for right now. And we're going to work on this plane. Alright. And then we're going to come up to the render and we're going to go to render properties and turn on draw micro mesh. Then we're going to go over here to geometry. Modify topology. Then we're going to use the micro mesh here. Then we're going to select the large leaf. And if you don't see it, sometimes you, I don't know if it's a bug, if you turn on and off the, uh, the uh, polyframes here, you can see a little bit better. We can switch to a different material. And if we do the BPR render, we'll get that same clipping. Alright. Let's go ahead and spin that edge so it's around like this, so we can take a better look at it. It's still working if I come up here and convert to zero real geometry. It didn't clip it. Let's control Z this back. Uh, another thing, if you want the poly painting to be applied, you need to turn on this little paintbrush icon right up here. We'll turn that on. And give it a second. And it still clipped it. But once we convert that to geo, it's still there. It's just a little extra large. Let's control Z that. So let's see how we can fix that. We're going to select the large leaf here. Like I said, this is the visualized exactly like one plane here. Deformation. And we're going to unify this. And you can see it kind of shrunk up there. To make this update and preview, we'll just click one time. And you can see with inside that plane there, it's all fitting in. So it shouldn't clip on the left and the right side. Select plane again, and we will have to probably go ahead and turn off micro mesh and turn it back on, and select that one that we just unified, and the BPR render, and you can see right there. But of course, if we want the poly painting, we need to turn that on. So, paintbrush icon, and when we're done, convert it to real geometry. The uh, next option I'll be going over is called the insert mesh. Uh, what this will do is insert a mesh and uh, it'll insert it in as uh, one solid object. So when it inserts it, it won't have any subtools below it. As you can see here, we got a ring and no subtools. So we're going to come down here and we're going to insert. And we're going to insert, let's say, this cone. Then if we come up to subtools here, you can see there's no uh, subtools. Uh, we can turn on the polyframes and you can see we have two different um, poly groups and if you don't see them sometimes you may need to come down to here to the uh, poly groups and auto group that to see the separate groups now if you're wondering well you still want to move one of these objects and the other one stay well if you press the move here with the transpose so I'll just click out here and if I try moving this, it moves both of them at the same time. So if I want to move just one of them, I'll hold the control key and just click on here. I'm in move mode. So I'll just click. And it's going to mask the other one out. All right. Let me do that again. Control click. Then I'll just bring this out a little bit like this. And we can move one like that. Now if I want to move the cone here, I'll remove the mask. Control key and click this here. And we can move that like that. And of course, if you want to split them later, then you can just go down here and group split. Notice this one here, we have this one that's called Mesh from Brush. Um, it's grayed out because uh, we need some type of insert brush. So if we come over here and we select this, uh, let's say this head as example, and I'm not going to press this right now, but if I press this, it's going to replace the tool that I'm on 
and the sub tools and replace that. Well, maybe I don't want that replaced. It's recommended that you append a Polymesh 3D star. Then we're going to select a star here. Come down here and click it. I'll just tip it up so you can see it right there. Then you can see my head over here. It's going to get replaced on the star that is selected in the sub tools. So I'm going to go ahead and mesh from brush. Then there it is. That's one way that you can do it. We'll go ahead and delete that. Another way you can do this is it's really simple. Um, you don't have to pin it. Um, like I said uh, earlier, the Polymesh 3D is recommended, but I just basically just duplicate this, make it simple. And let's come down here. And there you go. We'll go ahead and delete that. Now, if we didn't have one down here and we press this, it's going to replace this one that we're in um, on this uh, layer right here where the sub tool is at. So if that's active, it's going to get replaced. So if I went down here and mesh from brush, then it gets replaced. This is addition to the Dynamesh here. Uh, the sphere is the Dynamesh and the cylinder is appended, which is the uh, PM cylinder. We're going to check the uh, next icon here so we can cut a hole through here. Now, it recommends come down here and group as the Dynamesh sub. I think, um, from what I'm testing, I'm really not having to click this. So, if I click this, that's fine. We'll just click it like it tells us to. Then we're going to come back up here to the Dynamesh and make sure that icon here so we can cut into it. Then we're going to come down to Merge and Merge down. Then we're going to clear the mask. Then it's going to cut a hole. This is Merge Tries and Weld Points. Okay, we have this cube from ZBrush that was a primitive and I made it a polymesh 3D and if we zoom way in here where the points are all gathered up what appears we got let me turn my draw size down one point and I'll go straight up two and three it appears that these are triangles here somewhere in the square right here well, actually, there's all these little uh, points are just gathered up here. This is actually a quad. So if I was to uh, merge tries, well, these are not tries in here. These are all quads still. So if I merge tries, you'll see nothing happens, and I'll click it. Now, if I come over here and weld points, like I said, all these points are just bunched up together here, and it's going to weld them. And when I weld them, then it will turn it into tries. So I'll weld points. And we get this here. Now what it did was weld some of these points in here. And now it converted it into triangles. So if I want to merge the tries into quads, I'll press merge tries into quads. And then we get something like that. And of course our crease come on. So we'll just go ahead and increase all. And you can kind of see there. Now if we look here, we got one point, two, three, and four. So these are all quads now. 